Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we're going to have Flavio. Flavio is from Pernambuco in Brazil. So let's see what Flavio has to say. Enjoy the interview. So hello Flavio, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, how about you? I'm very well, thank you so much for taking the time today for the interview, thank you. Thanks a lot for the invitation. It's very interesting to be in an interview. Amazing. So tell me, how's your day going so far? Well, it's going well. I've been working at home, doing my chores and doing the deadlines. I have to finish my essays to, to hand in. So. Busy. <laughs> yeah, very busy <laughs> so far. It's great to be busy. I think when you are busy, you know, it, it feeds you well. It, it keeps the little evils away from your from your mind. Yes, you have to keep your mind busy or else you start getting down. Me too. I like to be busy and do this. So tell me, where are you from, Flavio? I'm from Carpina, here in Pernambuco, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. But I live in Recife right now for 12 years. Wow. Since and why the change from your hometown to Recife? Because it's a small city and it, the, we didn't have college there. So yeah. I came to Recife to begin the education of college and yeah. then I stayed here ever since. And your family, they're all back in your hometown? No, my mother lives here. I used to live with my grandmother when I was younger. But uh, then she passed away in 2014, uh, yeah, 10 years ago. And uh, I came to live here in Recife ever since. I see. And um, what do you do for work, for living? I'm a researcher. I'm a lawyer and a researcher. Uh, I don't practice much law, but I have that uh, in my education. But currently, I'm a researcher for human rights and uh, development. So walk me through a little bit more about your career as a researcher. Yeah, it's basically reading documents, reading law, because it's uh, human rights. And we have to study a lot of international treaties and documents of the International Court, the UN. And we, I spent my entire day reading and making, uh, writing articles, making a lot of stuff with them. I see. Amazing. Okay, so during the interview, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also about your point of views, okay? Okay. Flavio, before we start our journey, we in the Magic Box, how would you like you to tell me something interesting about yourself? Okay, so I like to draw a lot. I, besides being a lawyer and a researcher, I'm uh, very fond of drawing, and I've, I've been developing my my lines, and, and it's very it's very nice thing to do. Wow, that's amazing! So you are an artist as well. Yeah, so I, you can say that. I, I don't earn any money do, uh, doing my art, but I like to do it because it's creative. I'm a very creative person. Amazing. Flavio, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views? Yes, <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I've got to hear my best friend. full of random fun questions. I'm just going to play a song now just for us to relax a bit before the first question, okay? Okay. Let's do it. Yes, you always can join me dancing. Right, so before we start the journey, um, during the game, it becomes up a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, you don't want to answer, always can change, okay? Okay. Okay, first question for you is, when have you been the most happy? Oh, I think very recently when I received the news about being in the doctorate program that I'm currently in right now, the human rights that is in Paraíba. It's very close to where I live, in João uh -huh. Pessoa. 
a city near Recife. And I started it in July last year. And I heard the news in March. And it was very nice and very funny situation because I didn't expect to pass the exam. I was already doing other things. But a friend from of mine that lives there said that she was very happy to begin studying with me. And I didn't know what she was talking about. She said, you passed the, the selection of the doctorate course. So that's how I knew. And it was a very happy moment, one of the happiest moments I can remember. When you were doing the test or when you applied for it, did you think that you could pass? Yes, I thought, but you know, the the test itself was not something I felt really prepared for because it was three stages. The first stage is a written exam and the exam, I didn't, didn't think I was my best, but the, then we were, the second phase was uh, the project and the project was very good and I did feel like it was very good. So it, it made me pass. The, the amazing, amazing. And uh, there was a lot of places or not? Was I mean, a lot of people applying for it or not? Yes, it's, it was a very, it was not many places to enter the, the course, but there were a lot of people doing it because the, they went there. My, to my line of research, there were more than 60 people doing the, the test. Well, more than 60 people, you said? More than 60 people, yes. I see. They, they applied for it. And there were three, three places. Out of 60 people, there was only three places available. Yeah. And one of the 60 ones that got the place was me. And I was very happy about it because I kind of wasn't expecting it. I was very happy. Good for you. Well done. Very good. Mm -hmm. Next question, let's do it. Hey, Flavio from Brazil. Next question is, what is the funniest or the strangest gift you have ever received? Oh, that's... I, I believe that the strangest gift I have ever received was a CD, when we use buy CDs, from ABBA. Because I... I it wasn't a fan of ABBA. I liked their music, but the the person who gave it to me said that it was she knew I was gonna love it, and she has she did know why I heard it, but she it was very strange because I never thought of buying a CD from ABBA. <laughs> I love ABBA, Flavio. I love ABBA. They're great. They're great. But it was like the, the, those CDs of greatest hits. It was okay. very generic. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And um, talking about artists, about, you know, uh, which artists um, always have a big influence in your life or in yourself? Oh, I, I think uh, musically, I think currently Lady Gaga is always an influence because I think that she's very creative. The way she makes her music is very well thought and very well developed. But in arts in general, I like very much uh, movies. So um, the movie makers that I really, really like. So Pedro Almodovar and Tarantino are my favorite ones. And I think they're great artists, even though their, their movies are blockbusters and everyone watches them. But I think they are artistic pieces that everyone should pay attention like they're watching i don't know uh, mona lisa or something because it's artistic in some ways top three favorite songs of lady gaga for you okay so start with the third one i think telephone with her and beyonce because it's a very empowering song creative song about a woman doing her own thing and then I think the the next one would be Stupid Love because it's not what you think when you hear the title. It's when you go to understand the lyric, you understand that it's a love so powerful that it's stupid because it doesn't think. And the first one will always be my favorite is Born This Way because it's a song about 
the way we are born and the way creative ways we can be different from one another. It's a very beautiful song. Amazing. I think she she left her signature in the world after that song Born This Way. I think it exploded everywhere and people connect. Ev everyone connects with it because it can go different yeah. directions. She, she d did her... I think it's like a generational thing. Madonna first came, like, I think Cher and Madonna, they are very um, transcenders in that way. Real blazers, as, it, as some people call. And then the others that came generations after had to do, take the, the message forward. And I think Lady Gaga does that in a very generational adequate way because it's to it speaks more to the people who were born in the 90s and the beginning of the 2000s has to do something different to to create and she, she does that for us amazing very good next question let's do it Right, so before the next question, Flavio, um, you know, being a researcher and, uh, you know, and focus on the human rights, yeah? Since you start your career, um, what's the most frequent questions that people ask to you about human rights? Or tell me what's the main topics that, uh, like, that you've been focused, focusing since you started your career, if you can share. Okay, so people have a very... I don't know, wrong way of thinking about the human rights, especially here in Brazil, because they say that it's the rights of the bandits, the bad guys. And it's not that, because human rights is a way of uh, assuring everyone that they will be um, protected by the states and they will be protected by the international community in some ways, even though sometimes it's not very... Um, it, it doesn't go as well as the the documents, the treaties they establish, but it's an intention that we should take forward. So human rights, um, currently here in Brazil, we are discussing a lot of things in human rights, but the most important are the indigenous people's rights, especially the rights to land. And that's, I, I written an article about it that's is going to be published um, here in Brazil, and um, the the thing I'm studying currently is uh, the cultural rights, the right to our own culture, because uh, with the internet and all the platforms, the streaming platforms, we have a lot of problems that are beginning to be seen, like um, Brazilian movies or Brazilian shows, they don't have the same range as the shows from the United States. And this creates a difficulty, a problem in our own culture. So I'm studying specifically this case, but there are a lot of things, very interesting things in human rights nowadays. Amazing, thanks for sharing, thank you. Next question for you is, what is your favorite guilt pleasure TV show? Oh, I think, I don't know. I don't know if you can say that watching reality TV is a guilty pleasure. But um, maybe sometimes I watch uh, Big Brother. As you mm -hmm. know. It's kind of a guilty pleasure because sometimes you don't have, they, those people don't have much to show or to be, but you just want to know what they're, they're, they're talking about. Uh, how, if they're fighting each other, sometimes it's interesting to see that. It's interesting to say about Big Brother, actually. Today, um, on my way home, back home, I was thinking about that. I think in Brazil, it's been at, at 24 editions already, at yeah, 24. And I think Brazil, it's the, the biggest consumer of Big Brother. I think people watch Big Brother, like it's like a soap opera, like as we are. You know, back in Brazil, we are uh, raised watching soap opera at least twice a day or once a day. And I think Big Brother became like a soap opera for a, for a three months or two months. Um, and that's why yeah. people connect a lot with uh, Big Brother. Yeah, sometimes there's, there's those characters that everyone talks about them. I believe it was in the year of the pandemic that they, we had 
Gil do Vigo, that was a very, he's also from here, the, the city I live in, that he was very funny. Everyone started talking like him and saying the things he said, because Brazilians like to replicate this, these things. <laughs> And the winner was a very, had a very interesting story because she started, nobody in the house liked her. It was Juliette, her name. She's a singer, famous singer now. And nobody liked her in the beginning. And there was like this villain that was a very famous singer called, called Carol Conca. And they were against each other. And in the end, in all, in the entire a country rooted for Juliet, and it was very beautiful. But sometimes it's very boring. This this season, I don't think they're very very good. And there there are some characters, interesting characters, like the singer Vanessa Camargo. She's also taking part, but it's not very fun this year. I see. Okay, ready for another one? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Next question. Hey, Flavio, next question is... Right, what is the worst thing someone can say on a first date? Oh, the worst thing someone can say on a first date to me, I think it would be I don't like movies. Because <laughs> if they said they, don't like, they didn't like movies, they would be at that end to me. Because I like movies and I think movies are a special part of our life because it's something that you can witness together and it's a fantasy story that you can it can become a, a topic of conversation with the person you like and if a person doesn't like a movie i, I won't, won't have uh what you talk about with them because i talk about movies the entire time so it's a <laughs> no no for me do you like going to the cinema or you prefer to watch movies at home i love going to the cinema because um it's like a ritual you go there you buy your ticket and yeah. if it's close to some place you go to a bookstore or a, a coffee and then you go see the movie i think it's something we have to cherish in our lives those, those little rituals that we have in our everyday lives because with the internet everything is so easy to find so there so, in our hands that we forget those nice moments and I love going. I love watching at home too, but going to the movies is more special to me. I'll tell you something, Flavio. I agree with you on a hundred percent. What I just said right now. People who knows me very well, my very close friends, they know how much I love going to the cinema. It's like a journey, you know, it's the only time of the day when I'm there in the cinema that I forget about the world out there. I forget what's happening out there. I literally connect with the experience of being watching a movie in the cinema. And uh, for me, it's like a therapy. Yeah, I go at least twice a week. Uh, I try to go once, twice a week, the weekend. And for me, it's just, um, it's something amazing. Saying that, which one was the latest movie you saw in the cinema? You watched in the cinema, the, la the, the latest one. Yes, I saw a very great movie. The, that is Running for the Oscars, the actor uh, category. It's uh, The Holdovers, which here in Brazil, they call it the Os Rejeitados. So right. Different uh, trans, uh, translation uh -huh. because uh, it's a great movie about uh, one professor and one student that get uh, forgotten in the college and they have to spend Christmas together and they hate each other. But it's a very beautiful movie. I'm not very into dramas and mm -hmm. those kinds of movies, but this one was a very delightful one. And the actor, Paul Giamatti, is uh, running for the Best Actor Oscar. I'm wow. rooting for him because it's a very, he did a very good job. I love dramas. <laughs> I love yeah. watching dramas. <laughs> it's a very beautiful one. Next question. Let's do it. Oscar. Right, before the next one, you know, talking about Pernambuco, yeah, of course, Recife, it's a, it's a place where I believe it's the biggest city in the north, isn't it? Like, northwest of Brazil, isn't it? 
It's the second biggest. Which like, one is the Salvador, biggest? Salvador is the biggest ah, one, ah. and then there's Recife, yeah. Recife. Okay, so talking, you know, about Recife, um, you've been there for the last 12 years. What's besides the weather, besides the you know the 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 nature, the beaches? Tell me, uh, what's something interesting about the city? What are the postcards of Recife, in your opinion? Yes, I think the the postcard of Recife is the Recife, the neighborhood, the ancient Recife that we call Recife Antigo. Okay, it's the postcard of the city because there's all these historic buildings the Chamber of Commerce and old banks that made those very big, like Harry Potter uh, buildings. It's very, very beautiful. And this city itself is in some parts very poetic. It's, it, it has a lot of beautiful places and uh, landscapes, very, very beautiful. But I think what's nice about this city is that it's very multicultural because mm -hmm. we have a lot of cultural movements in Northeast Brazil that begin here in Recife and they spread across the country. Like right now, I think the biggest movement here is the Brega movement, which is a very romantic uh, in, in music that people talk about their feelings and how everyone uh, in love is crazy for each other and when people cheat on each other on each other and those <laughs> things are the themes of the brega musics and it's original from here recife also we have a, a, a great carnival every year in the march february or march this year it will be in february we have four <laughs> days of um holidays that start in the Saturday and they finish on the Tuesday of the next week. And it's a very big uh, people from all over the, the world come to see that we have the, I don't know how to say in English, it's Galo da Madrugada, the Midnight Rooster. Yeah. <laughs> it's the biggest carnival um, party that uh, in the world it's in the Guinness book I believe I and see. it attracts a lot of people it's close to where I live you can see the they, they get it's a very big statue of a rooster very colorful and everyone goes there to dance and sing very nice party Amazing. Actually I've been in in, in Recife the carnival I think I think 2007, I think, um, with a good friend of mine. And because it was Carnival, we didn't have much time and energy to see the city properly, like as a cultural uh, trip. So we literally was going to Olinda, which is not far from there. Yes. And um, we were spending time um, in Recife. So that's uh, the memories that I have from there. Yeah, Olinda and Recife are sisters, city sisters, because one and they, they always do things together. They, they do the birthdays in the same day of the two oh, cities. Oh, didn't know yeah. that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Next question for you is, what's your morning ritual? My morning ritual? I say a, a prayer. <laughs> mm -hmm. I talk to God first when I uh, get up. And then I go do my... Well, wash my teeth and brush my teeth and wash my face. And I say good morning to my husband, that he lives here with me. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and uh, we start, we have the coffee and the, the breakfast together. And then I go to read something. So I, I always start my day reading something. It's, it's, my, it's the moment where I'm most uh, inspired. And I, I like to get some philosophy i'm reading Jung shu han it's a very nice philosopher from korea that lives in germany i see and, and it's a very very nice i read and then i start to work do you uh, is your husband from from Recife as well or not yes he's from here too and we are together for almost six years we will be six years in, in august this year so sweet. five years and a half. <laughs> Very sweet.
Right, I have three questions left, okay, Flav? Let's do it. Okay. Next question is, who is your biggest hero? My biggest hero is my grandmother because she's a very, uh, she has a very beautiful story because she was very poor when she was young. She didn't have uh, enough to, her family was very, very modest. And then she came here to Recife, married my grandfather. And they together, they built their life because it was not very easy for him as well. And she always worked to support him at home. They had four beautiful children that are my uncles and my mother. And she grew up in life. She, she developed her means. She died a very successful lawyer because she, she started law school very late in her life. Like when she was 40, to, not 40, but almost 50 years old, she started law school. And then she, she was a very successful lawyer and inspired me to become a lawyer as well. That's so beautiful. I have goosebumps now. My God, how amazing. Beautiful story, Flavio. When you think about her, what's the best memory that comes to your mind? Mm, I think when she when we were working together, because we worked for some time, there were times where um, we would get the, the same case to work together, and we went to the call it forum, it's, it's the place where we talk to the judge, to the courthouse, and uh, we, we were together and she would say to me, you can do this, you're not supposed to do that. And those little um, tips she was giving to me were important lessons that none of my teachers in college, they taught me, but she, she was teaching me that. Oh, beautiful. What was her name? Lenira. Lenira. Beautiful. Two Thank questions you. left. Let's do it. Okay. So before the, the next question, as I could see your eyes shining, talking about your husband, tell me what's the biggest difference between both of you and the biggest similarity? The biggest difference is that I'm really stay at home. I'm very antisocial. I don't like to go out a lot. And he is the life of the party. If he sees someone with a guitar, he just wants to play the guitar with the person. He likes to sing with everyone. He makes friends with people he never saw in his life. And he likes to go to, to party, he likes to go out a lot. And we are very different in that way. And the biggest similarity that we share in common, I believe, is that we see that we are we are people who who care about our friends. Mm -hmm. Him and me, we have a, a very deep connection to our friends, very empathic connection because we both believe that we are here to be of help. And that's what I love about him. And what I see about myself too, is that we are very connected to the network of people around us. Wow, amazing. And how did your path cross, if you can share? Yes, it was on the internet. It started on Facebook and <laughs> a lot of years ago, I think it was 2011, I don't think so. And we talked, but it didn't go, it didn't went forward. So one day he just called me to see him in a uh, uh, square here nearby. And we talked a little during the afternoon. And then it was instant. We wow. never uh, parted ways. We've been together ever since. Beautiful. Okay. Next question for you is, tell us something that you have done that you feel very proud of yourself. What I have done that I feel very proud. Yes, I... Yes, I, I did... Uh, I mean, I was a professor until last year in a college here. 
And um, some of my students, they used to um, pay like homages to the, the teacher that they like. And one of my best students, the, the first ones when I started teaching, they last year, they gave me a, an homage because they were finishing the, the course. And it was a very beautiful accomplished to me because I see that I made an impact in their lives. And it was very important to me to see that happening, to feel that like my students are now going to the professional way, they're getting their diplomas. That, that group specifically that they paid homage, they said I was an important professor to them. I felt very accomplished to see them achieving their success. I think it's, it was very important to me. Wow. Saying that, Flavio, when you think about yourself, when you analyze yourself, what's the best part of being you? What's the best part of being Flavio? I think the best part of being me is that I, I never cease to, to want to learn something. I've seen a lot of people like that really like to study, they are very accomplished, that they're very but they, they stop studying because they don't feel like it's necessary. But in my case, I feel like I will be 100 years old if I come to that. And I will always want to study. And I really like that because it's it what makes my life funny, interesting. It's learning every day a new thing. That's what I like. Wow, I love that. And it's so interesting because the, we're going to, you know, die. We're going to go to another another planet, to another life without knowing so much. Like, you're not going to learn so much magic. So I think the most we can learn, it doesn't matter what. It could be a simple thing. It could be something that you never, you never thought about. And when you learn something new, it's just, it makes your day. It makes, you know, it gives you this, this energy for you to keep it. Keep, as you said, keep learning all the time. Yes, because I think that this life that we come here, it's a journey that in some way we have to be different when we get to the other side. And yeah. I think the, the closest way to be different is learning because you never, you never are bored of studying. Studying is like, you can be bored of studying math or chemistry or something like that, but you are understanding the ways that, that the world functions or the way that other people thought about the world. And I think it should always be important. And to me, it's like something I always thank God because I like to learn. I, I don't think that I'm wasting my time when I'm studying. And I that's the thing that I like the most about myself. Amazing. Ready for the last question? Okay. Let's do it. Last question, Flavio. Right, but before um, before the last question, Flavio, uh, people watching the interview right now, they would like to start a career as a researcher, yeah? What would be your best piece of advice for those people? Yes, I think to be a researcher, you have to be connected to some programs. So I believe that you have to look for the program that you want to be a part of and start understanding what they are researching because sometimes it can be something that you are also interested in and sometimes it can be not very much and you can look to other places and found something find something that you can uh, relate more in my case for example I was studying here in Recife, where I used to work. But then uh, last year, I found out that in Paraíba, that's a state close by, they were studying the, the approach that I have to human rights. So instead of going here in Recife, I went there. It's not in the same city, but it's close. And you can work from far away like I do today and mm -hmm. develop your your career as a researcher amazing okay last question is what is something not that's not many people know about you oh, I'm, see. not many people know about me is that yes not many people know about myself that i 
like I really like to party, but I'm not a very uh, steady party goer because I don't have the time. I have to study a lot. But I love to party, and I'm very excited for this year's carnival because it will be a very like last year's when we returned from the pandemic in sort of a way. And this year will be also a great one because the city is very, everyone's excited and I'm excited as well. And people don't know about that because I don't talk about that much. Amazing. And how is being gay in Recife, in your opinion? It's a place where you can be your truly self, you can express the way you are, or it can be a bit tricky. Yes. Um, when I was growing up, and I used to come to Recife and was discovering life and the community here, it was kind of tricky because people was weren't very aware sometimes and the, the prejudice is very, very big here in Brazil. But uh, nowadays it has become a lot easier because there is the, the spots, the places in the city that you, you go to, to be safe. Um, there is a, where I live, it's very near the center of the city and there's a, a neighborhood called Boa Vista. And in Boa Vista, it's very known for uh, the gay life here because okay. there, are, there are a lot of people um, of the LGBTQ community and uh, there are clubs. There are clubs for bears, clubs for everyone, clubs more prone to popular Brazilian music, more to electronic music. And it's not very big like Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro, for example, but it has become a very more tolerant city because mm -hmm. it, used to, it used to be like that. But nowadays it's very nice. I see the younger ones, like I'm 33 now, but I see the, the younger LGBTs and I feel like they're very free, like I wasn't in, in their age, because when I was like 18, 17, it was still something people were getting used to. But nowadays, everyone can be free to be themselves. Of course, sometimes, sadly, there's um, people who say things that they disrespect but it isn't more more common and the the nice part is that the city itself uh, everyone is more respectful to, towards that it's very nice it's so interesting you mentioned that uh, Flavio because I totally agree with you I think you know during my time as well growing up I remember um, you know even when I, I was living in Portugal before moving to, to, to London to England and I remember that uh, during my time uh, you know, when I was younger, I didn't see that much, you know, people expressing themselves. And nowadays I see this younger generation, part of the LGBTQ plus community. And I go like, my goodness, you know, I feel like, I think with the technology nowadays, everything's too visible, you know, people, you cannot yeah. run away. I think during the, before, um, you know, everything was hidden. They're not showing you on TV. Everything was limited. But right now, I think even if you don't want to see, it's there. It's visible. It's yeah. kind of it's in your face. You have no other chance or other choice to not to face it and to educate yeah. yourself as well and somehow you know understand more. And uh, I think this new generation. That's I think one of the, the the good parts of technology and social media. It's about that people express themselves and somehow educating and open other people's mind as well. That's how I see yeah. it nowadays, which is good. Yeah, it's very good because. Uh, I think that uh, we have established a way to people to understand more the world. The technology is good for that. You see everything that happens in the world and you can develop better understanding and actions that include people. Because yeah. I think that when you exclude, uh, uh, something's wrong when someone is being excluded. And nowadays, uh, everyone gets to be a part of the, the party. Everyone gets to respect the choices of each other. And it's very beautiful to see. I, I remember when I was growing up, uh, I haven't seen m many drag queens in the city. And yeah. nowadays, there's the, the problem with RuPaul and everyone watches. And there's a, a drag race here in Brazil as well. And they, they're Brazilian drag queens that, that are very famous. And the young ones are 
growing their their arts and showing who they are and it's just an example of how great it is to be nowadays an lgbtq member of, of the community because you can express yourself more and i believe that it should all and to more visions of the world, more different ways of being. Everyone should have a, a place. Absolutely. I think being gay nowadays, it's fashionable. You know, it's it's great. It feels great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <it's> very nice. <laughs> right, uh, Flavio, it's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? okay. Let's start with money. Job. <laughs> life life reading fear alone being alone family my everything wow love creating sex a funny part of life religion Important. I think it's important. Okay. Politics. Not so important. <laughs> no, <laughs> just kidding. I think politics is necessary. Let's see. Friendship. Friendship. Um very selective. Desire. Desire. Travel. Regret. Regrets. Haven't. Mm, haven't finished the books I want you to finish. Okay. Wish. Wish. Mm, to live in a more open world. Okay. One word for happiness. One word for happiness. To be in peace. Okay. One word for Recife. Colorful. One word for Pernambuco. Pernambuco. Um, I would say historic. Brazil, one word. Warm. A warm place in every sense of the world. Warm. In every sense of the world. Because it's very hot and it's warm because the people here are very hospitable and they will, everyone who comes here will be very well received because Brazilians are warm in every sense of the world. Amazing. One word for lawyer. Lawyer, it's a challenge. One word for researcher. It's a pleasure. One word for human rights. Human rights. It's a goal. Okay. And the last one now, if you could define your your drawing uh, as an artist uh, in one word, what that would be, your art? It would be a re um, psychedelic realism. Wow, wow. Yeah, two words. <laughs> Let's yeah. pretend now we're going to go all the way to, to, to Recife to meet your husband for a coffee. And I'm going to ask him, define Flavio in one positive word and one negative word only. What he would say? I think positive word, I think he would, he would say that I am very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. That way with, I believe I I am. <laughs> and uh, in a negative way, is there I'm stressful because I'm sometimes I'm very stressed at home. Wow, I cannot see you as a stress stress person. You are, you come across a very calm, understanding, soft yeah. person. But with things at home, I'm very methodic, and I I really sometimes are I'm stressed out. But we <laughs> we we can solve that. <laughs> He's your husband, he knows very well. He knows how to define your stress and your calm as well. I can yeah. see that. <laughs> okay. 
Let's play now Flavio and the Magic Box, and you can ask me a question. All right, but before you ask me the question, what is your favorite Portuguese word? My favorite Portuguese word, let me see. I think it's aprender, which mm -hmm. means learning, because it's like I said earlier that we're here to do that. That's our mission in life to learn to oh, to open our minds. And it's a very uncommon word to use as an adult uh, an adult, but mm -hmm. as a child you learn that a lot. You have to aprend you have to learn something. And as an adult, I think that we never stop to have to learn some things. Amazing. Okay, you can ask me a question now. Okay. So, I was wondering, how, how is life in London? Well, wow. It's funny, it's, because people say that Londoners are cold and they're harsh, but how is life itself in London? Amazing question, amazing question. Right, so I've been living, actually, I've been living in London um, uh, most of my life, actually, uh, so far. London is a, is a city, um, Flavio, that literally people say uh, here, people, people in London, they say people, they don't care. When I say they don't care, it means like you can leave your home dressing up whatever you want to dress. You can express yourself the way you want to, to do. And people, they're going to pass by you. They might look at you, they might admire you, they might, you know, ignore you, but they don't care. It's a place where um, you can be your truly self. It's a place where you can meet people all over the world. You know, there are so many languages. When you walk in central London, you can hear Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, um, Polish, um, it, you know, there are so many languages that sometimes you go like, my God, I, I, I listen to, I, I can hear more foreign language than English itself. So it's a place where, you know, it can be very fast as well, like very stressful. It can be that. At the same time as well, um, it's a place, it can be cold, it can be uh, gray, you know, the weather here, people. Uh, London, England is well known for the rain, for the gray weather, which is, which is part of it. But at the same time as well, it's a place where people... It's um, it, you feel like people they are here for opportunities. People are here to, to you know, to try a life, to connect with people on the globe. And I think it's uh, if you like a place where everything is very fast, uh, you know, you'd love to live here because you'd you've learned something every single day. You know, I've been living in London over 17 years now, and there is always a place when I go in London that I go, my God. Uh, I've never been here before. So there are always a new place to, to go. There's always a new place for you to connect with different people around the world. The cuisine, you know, the, the, you can go to so many different restaurants as well. A lot of opportunities here as well. London is a place where um, uh, you can travel anywhere in Europe. Like we have so many flights, like very cheap flights to different parts of Europe, not just Europe, of course, but worldwide. And it's really well connected as well. So London is a place where, um, you know, say the center of the world is here because it's a place where, um, you know, it never sleeps. London never sleeps. You can you can go 3 o'clock in the morning, 7 a.m. or you can go at 10 p.m. You're going to see things happening all the time. It never stops. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a place where uh, it can be stressful as well. Of course, everything is on the go. You see people just on the go all the time. Like, and you can go to the same bar every single night that you're going to see different people every single night in the same bar you're never going to see someone at the same person um again like repeated because there's always people around london so yeah it's a it's a great place to be it's a place where you can be your truly self for sure seems wonderful because I, i've always wanted to go there but i haven't had the time but I, i'm making plans to to go to europe so maybe i'll have I'll go by that. 
Let me know. It'll be a pleasure okay. for me to show you around. It'll be a pleasure. I love when people, friends come to London, family, when people come along. I love to show the city because it's just to see people, you know what I mean? Their eyes shine looking, you know, Buckingham Palace, the, you know, the London Eye, Big Ben, all those, the Tower Bridge, all those main places in London. People, it, it's just fascinating. I feel like a tourist when people come here. <laughs> That's nice. Flavio, did you enjoy the interview? Yes, it was a great moment. I, I wasn't expecting it would be so nice. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for being no so problem. sweet and very kind as well and accepting the invitation. And um, if I'm not wrong, actually, I have over a thousand guests on the show and you are my first researcher, you know, in human rights, if I'm not wrong. Um, and it's, right. it's amazing too. I could be here talking to you another hour just about that. Mm -hmm. But before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. Okay, um, uh, I think that we should, in a positive message, we should change the way we look to the world. Because sometimes we look with the eyes of sadness, of the eyes of something is missing, and it's nothing missing. Sometimes we don't have anything in the moment, but it will, it's coming to our, ourselves and to, in the moment we are ready for it. So we should change the way we look to the world because when things are not going well, I think the first thing that we should do is change the way we look. Amazing. I love that. Thanks so much. Flavio, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much for the interview and we keep in touch, okay? Thanks. Okay, thanks, William. Bye. Thanks a lot. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Yeah. Ciao. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.